Welcome to the Bronx Latino History Project. Uh, today is December 6th, 2021. Uh, my name is Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society, and we're here again, uh, very happy to be here again, with Elba Cabrera for part three of her oral history. And Elba will be speaking about primarily her time at AHA today, um, but there's a few things that she'd like to speak about before getting into that. Um, so, Elba, uh, go ahead and, and start where you'd like. Yeah, um, I've been thinking about my life since we started these interviews. And after you left last week, I started to think about um, my, well, um, my aunt, when we lived to, all together, the extended family, my aunt is, uh, was a medium. Sure. And so I grew up uh, in a house that believed in, in Espiritismo, which is the, you believe in the spirits. Sure. And uh, I mean, when I was very, and I, re I can recall like when I was around five, and uh, they used to have seances in the house. Sure. And I used to be very scared because I would, you know, I would hear them talking and everything. I, you know, like I really didn't know what was going on, but yeah. I knew what was going on. Oh, we, yeah. It was both, you know, wanting to know more, but also being, you know, afraid oh, of, sure. of what I was going to learn. But, um, on every every Friday, this used to happen. They used to have their the people that used to believe in in, in the spiritismo, and uh, they would talk to to the spirits. So uh, that was something that was that I grew up with, and as I got older, I didn't I wasn't afraid of it. Sure. But I also respected it, and I respected my aunt. My aunt had. Uh, what you call facultades. Sure. She had the 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 dome the, to, to be able to to see beyond what we see. Yeah. And um, we all, you know, depended on her a lot because of it, because she was always there for us and she could give us advice. Sure. And she would tell us, you know, uh, think about this and think about that. So it was just a very natural thing for us. It, I didn't talk too much about it when I was, uh, uh, until now, because yeah. people looked at you like you're crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, know, not realizing just how widespread so many of these practices and, are and in so very, many different cultures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not only, and, and, and truly it was uh, a way of, of getting out some of the things that you, you needed to talk about. Yeah, definitely. You know? Definitely. Uh, so, uh, through the years, you know, as I understood it, understood it better and I was able to talk to my aunt about it, she said to me that, because uh, I said, I said when, when did you know that you had this gift? Because yeah. it is a gift. Sure. And she said, well, she says, I was about 12 years old and this is in Puerto Rico. Sure. And she and her friends had, there was just a woman that they used to call La Bruja. Sure, yeah. In the mountain. Yeah, yeah. Well, this she said in the, up in the mountains. And, and uh, the kids had gone there to make fun of her. Mm -hmm. And they were, you know, uh, whatever they were saying. And the woman came out and she <laughs> pointed to my aunt <laughs> and says, you're making fun of me, but you are going to have the gift. Yeah. You have it now. The <laughs> my aunt got, she was afraid, but she, she says she says she never went back to make fun of the lady sure. again. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know she re, people would come, people would come to that. You know as she got older, come to the house. You know for readings. Oh yeah. Because she was very good. You know she could look at you. And uh, she, she, she could tell whether you're a good person or not. Sure. And that, sure. that's, uh, you know, that's something that most of us don't have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we, we go by what a person may look like or what they say. Yeah. And you believe them. But she, she was very, very, very careful of who surrounded her. 
and she would tell me, you have to be careful, you just can't trust everyone, you know. Yeah. But anyway, uh, uh, during the time that, you know, I was growing up, of course I didn't talk about it because uh, people wouldn't understand. But sure. as I got older, I realized that a lot of families believed Oh, absolutely. It, and, um, and beyond that, um, other cultures. Sure. With, uh, with uh, Cuba going into the um, Santeria, uh, and it's all African-based. Yeah. Uh, this, the spirit, Espiritismo uh, began uh, in France. Uh, Dr. Kadak, uh, I have his book there, uh, and he was uh, very well known. Sure. He wrote many books on that. I'm and trying to think of his name right yes, now. Yes, it's with a K, and it's, it's uh, it'll come to me. Yeah. <laughs> but Kardak. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Dr. Yeah. Kardak. And I, I, I started getting a lot of his books because I was so interested in why, you know, people would believe. And he was, sure. he was very well known. Absolutely. Very well known. So, you know, as I matured, I realized that this was, you know, nothing to be afraid of, sure. or ashamed of, I should say. That uh, that was an experience that uh, has stayed with me, and there's certain rituals too that I still do. Sure, you sure. You know, uh, with that, uh, it is different from the Santeria. The Santeria is different, but uh, I respect the people that you know have taken that on. Absolutely. Uh, but to me, you know, uh, my aunt and my mother's, uh, you know, and uh, all of us, Lillian, Lillian was more uh, closer to it than Evelina. Okay, but Evelina, yeah. Evelina had a lot of, of, uh, of facultades, like they say. I, I remember you, you mentioned yeah, that. Yeah, she did. She, about that. Yeah, yeah, her kids would even say, how does she know that I did this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she, she was good. So that's the part, you know, that I wanted to, to share with you because Absolutely. I don't usually talk about it. Yeah. So and you've gotten me to talk about things that I, you know, I didn't. Absolutely. The other thing I thought about, too, was that um, since my uncle, he, you know, he, he, he was into everything besides the music and the promoting and uh, working with the, as a bolitero. Sure. Um, he also used to play cards and they, they used to gamble for money. Yeah. But he, he showed us all how to play cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so that's one of the things that we used to do. And Lillian was very good at the card playing and she, uh, until later in life, she was playing um, solitaire. Okay, yeah. She used to love to play solitaire. Yeah, so uh, you, you are making me Stephen, just open up and remembering things that I had not even thought about in a long time. Sure, sure, yeah, that often yeah. happens in, in these oral histories. And when when uh, your uncle would, would play cards, I imagine he'd have a lot of oh, he had tricks. social circle. And also, right? and also tricks. Oh, 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 he used to do, he oh used wow. To do tricks with the, he used to do tricks with the cards, and, and you know what he used to do too? That all the kids loved, you know, as we were growing up, and he, my, my children and, and Evelina's children, uh, he used to play with the tops. Remember the tops? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He called himself Mr. Top to the kids, <laughs> and they just loved it. And also the one that goes up and down. Oh, the, um, what's that called, slink? Slinky? No, not the no. slinky. It's a, it's a round thing with a cord. Oh, um, I know what you're talking about. What's that called? Uh... We'll think of it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he was very good at both. He used to play, you know, do all kinds of tricks with it. Yeah. And the kids loved it. They just <laughs> loved it. Yeah. And he yeah. sounded like a real character. Oh, he was. And, and he, he was a cook, too, if I'm and he, right. <laughs> Yes, he was. Yes, he was. He's a great cook. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I just miss, miss them all. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Each one of them. So, 
and I think you know covered that. So uh, you want to start talking about uh huh? Yeah, and uh, I guess the final thing was your story about Coquito. Oh, the Coquito story. Yeah. Oh, okay. When uh, Tony and I got married, we went to PR for our honeymoon. And we stayed at the Hilton for two days, mm. and uh, then we went for the rest of the, we were there for a week and a half or so. We went to stay at my aunt's house. So you know how hot it can get in the tropics. Absolutely, yeah. And it was a very hot day, and my aunt was going to go into to Old San Juan to do some shopping, and... Uh, she, you know, she said, do you want to go? And I said, yes, but Tony didn't want to go. Yeah. My husband didn't want to go. He says, no, no, it's too hot, you go. So when we came back, he was on the couch and he was out like <laughs> a light. Well, when my uncle opens up the refrigerator door, the coquito was like <laughs> half gone. And the other thing is, you know, it doesn't sound like much, but my uncle used to use much more rum than I do, than I do now. And it was like, he, he would make two bottles and use a whole bottle of rum. Oh, wow, so it was So you could imagine yeah. that it was very strong. And when you're drinking it, you really don't feel it. I know. It tastes good, but you know, so we found Tony stretched out, and my uncle says, no wonder he's out like a light. Yeah, gone through the coquito. It's easy, easy to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And another little story right that same week was that my my cousin Robert uh, was uh, out. He went out. He used to go dancing a lot. And uh, he came back, I don't know, maybe one or two in the morning. And we were sleeping in his room, and he had forgotten. <laughs> So he had forgotten his keys, and he started banging oh, no. at the window so my aunt would open, and he got reprimanded because he was disturbing us and, you know, all that. But that was a cute story. He says, I forgot, I forgot the way here. <laughs> yeah, so I used to tease him about that all the time. That's funny. <laughs> yes, yeah. Those are my two cousins. It was... Uh, Enrique Jr. And, and Robert, and they were like brothers to me because they were closer to my age. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, but they both of them uh, were raised in Puerto Rico. Sure, yeah. But they, you know, they had the language. Well, um, Enrique had, he was completely bilingual. Okay, I mean, he had yeah. both languages. Robert had it, but not as much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he was younger. But, uh, Younger because when he, they left, he was, let me see, he was four years old when they left okay. New York to go back to PR, and Enrique was six. Okay, so yeah. he, he had more of the grasp of the English language. But sure. Yeah, yeah, I miss them a lot too. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, they used to come and get me at the airport when I went and take me, you know, wherever I wanted to go. Yeah. So, you know, I, I depended on them, you know, a lot. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And there, yeah, there's a lot of more stories with them, especially uh, Enrique's son, Yeah. who's Enrique n number three, <laughs> he's the third. Uh, when he was six years old, uh, my cousin calls me, he says, could, uh, could you take uh, Enrique? Quito, that's what we call him, Enriquito for, for the summer because I, I want him to uh, learn English mm. uh, so he could go to the school here where they teach uh, both languages. Sure. So I said yes, but then I said to myself, how's he going to learn English in six weeks? That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. But I said, okay. So he, my kids were small and he came to live with us for that time, and in the, he never, during that whole time, did he, did I hear him speak, utter an English word. He was, 
he would play with them. They got along and yeah. all that. He also got the chicken pox. Oh, no. Yes, he did. <laughs> and, oh, my God, I said, of all the diseases, I said, this kid's going to want to call for his mom. <laughs> he never uttered his mother's name. It was wow. always, you know, you know how you get with the temperature. And, yeah. And, and you have trouble sleeping. He would say, Titi Elba, Titi Elba. He never, <laughs> I was so shocked. So it doesn't end there. He goes back home. He actually even went on an airplane by himself. Wow. Because they, they, they used to do that before. Now I don't think, I think they're stricter now. Yeah, I think they it are, was, yeah. you know, they had the stewardess, uh, that's what they call them. Now. Yeah. Uh, flight attendant. But take care of him until sure. you know, he got off. But, uh, you know, I thought it was kind of crazy to, be, you know, have a six-year-old to be on the plane. But yeah. anyway, yeah. He, he was very mature, too, for his age. So when he went back to Puerto Rico, he went for the test, and guess what? He you, passed you it. He passed, yeah. He passed it. Wow. And in the meantime, he had not uttered a single English word here. Sure. He had just absorbed. Soaked it all up, huh? Yeah. yeah. Wow. And right now he lives in Seattle. He's uh, a venture capitalist. Oh, okay, okay, sure. <laughs> but he he actually has retired from that. Yeah. And he's working. He's a consultant. He's retired and uh, he's done very well. Yeah. And I'm very proud of him. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But he was like a a son to me more than anything. Sure. You know, we were very close, and we are close. Yeah. So that's the stories great. Well, <laughs> that I remembered, and now we could move forward. Okay, great. So, all right. So let's uh, uh, let's go ahead and we'll start with um, kind of the very beginning of your time at Aha. Uh, maybe if you want to talk about if you had heard of the organization before you started exploring working there, and you know more kind of how you. Uh, I, you talked a little bit last time about how you were introduced to the organization and how the opportunity came up, but uh, but I guess you could start, pick up right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I knew a little, you know, about the organization. Uh, I knew Malta Vega, Malta sure. Moreno Vega, because through through UVP. Yeah, yeah. Um, when Evelina was uh, appointed to the Urban Coalition. Um, at one point, Malta was the secretary to the... Oh, that's right. Through that's the, right. Uh, to the board. And that's how they met. And, you know, it clicked because the two of them... She she talks about... Uh, Malta does about Evelina. That sure. She, she influenced, you know, her... Her thinking, and she was nowhere near having an organization. Yeah. She was just a worker, because I think she she was teaching first. She mm. was a teacher, but anyway, uh, that's how I met Malta. Sure. And uh, we, you know, we still have a relationship. She, you know, she admired my sister so much. So what happened was that yes, I knew of organizations. But I wasn't involved with them. I was with yeah. UVP. Yeah. And I went to Lincoln Center sure, to sure. the Demers Park. And Malta had a performance there for her. Or, uh, it was She, at the beginning, was called Visual Arts Center something or other. It was a long title. Yeah. And she, uh, so that's where I saw her. And, and I don't know how the conversation came up. Sure. But she, you know, she was telling me about AHA uh -huh, and that they were looking for someone. And I, you know, I told her, I said, I would be interested. She says, really? So she says, you know, she arranged for me to, to have an interview. Yeah. And uh, I went a few days later and uh, she and, and uh, Elsa, who was uh, the, at that time she was the acting executive director. Mm -hmm. They hired me right away. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, I started there in September of 1978. Okay, sure. 
the the previous month because uh, I, I met them in or it was in August it was when you in came August back. but that month was uh, the month that my uncle was Bobby was very very ill oh. and my aunt called and she said that she'd like me to you know be there sure and so I I, I spent about a week, you know, and he passed away while I was there. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. it was a sad time. I'm sure. And then when I came back, you know, I um, I started, you know, talking with them. You know, uh, I had already had the interview. Anyway, uh, they said, you know, that I could start as soon as I wanted. And, yeah. And they needed someone right away, so that's when I told Evelina and... And I started there in September of 1978. Okay, yeah. And a lot of things happened for me in that time because I graduated from graduated, yeah. in, 19, in June yeah. from uh, Westbury. And then my uncle passing and then the new job. Yeah, wow. So that was all, at, you know, all within three months. Yeah, wow. Which is, uh, you know, my life was like making a... a, a a uh, turn, absolutely <laughs> a real big turn, and uh, Lillian was very happy. My sister Lillian, and you know, she said something to me that I'll, I still remember. She said, "That's good that you're going there." She says, "These organizations last about twenty-five years." <laughs> <laughs> she said. And you'll get good experience. So I said, yeah. "Well, twenty-five years. I hope I won't have to be working." But yeah. that, that wasn't the case. I continued to work for longer than that. But it was, it was interesting how 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 mind went worked around yeah. that. You know, for okay. sure. Yeah, and uh, but I started there, and uh, Elsa was a great you know mentor. Uh, my my boss, she said, don't call me your boss. She says, we work together. Yeah. I used to learn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I had, uh, I had a lot of respect for her. And she was so great in, in uh, letting me blossom. Absolutely. And because of her, I got to know a lot of people. Sure. I would go, you know, to different places. Uh, I would go a lot of meetings. We went to a lot of meetings. Okay, yeah. Together, but then the events. She used to say, "You go. You like that." <laughs> and I did. It'd be like gallery openings. Gallery like openings, that. performances, performances, all yeah. of that. Wow, wow. And she would stay in the office working, and I was go. I was going out meeting people. Yeah. But uh, it was it it, it was uh, beginning of a, a a wonderful you know experience for me. Um, I met you know a lot of actors, uh, people that are well known, people that weren't so well known. Sure. And the organizations, many of them are still around. Yeah. Uh, I may not know the people that now are involved because uh, I would say many of them have passed on yeah. and new people have come in and uh, so that but it's been great Ballet Hispanico was one okay, uh, yeah. Tina Ramirez who was the founder we worked with her uh, Puerto Rican Traveling Theatre Miriam sure. Colón uh, Repertorio Español yeah. these are some of the you know uh, theatres that we we worked with and, and uh, the organizations that are hot you know, help yeah. through, uh, you know, through marketing, through advertising and just being there, you know, uh, especially proposals. Sure, they sure. Would, they would get help. Elsa was great with the proposals and she, you know, she would give a lot of her time to that. Yeah, that's wonderful because that takes so much time. Yeah, and, and especially the organization was, were one, but uh, individual artists. Because okay, yeah. individual artists are into their art, and they're not thinking in terms of, you know, where the next meal is coming Absolutely. from. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, one of the greatest things, just when I started, practically, I let's say I started in September, and 
around January, February, we got funded for uh, the Cedar Artist Project. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we had 40 artists that we worked with. Wow, yeah. And we had to place them in, you know, certain organizations. And uh, that's how I got to know, you know, Adal Maldonado, oh, sure. uh, Marcos, D, uh, Marcos uh, Kalish. Uh, there were just so many uh, that I can't even uh, begin to give you the whole list here because it, it would, you know, it wouldn't, we wouldn't have the time, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. But uh, because of my association there with the artists, uh, I feel very uh, blessed because many of them gifted me uh, some of their works. Absolutely. Uh, it's, and, and a few I, I gave them, you know, uh, a, like a donation for something, but most of them gave me the gift. Sure. And I, I really, you know, I'm enjoying it now because I'm home most of the time. Yeah. And uh, I have all these. And I'm gonna give you a tour, yeah, so you That'd can see uh, how wonderful, you know, uh, and blessed they have been to me. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, we had one of the things that I, I loved at, at Aha was, uh, well, I, I have to mention too uh, the theater pregones. Oh, absolutely. They they yeah. were born in in Aha's offices. Yeah. Yeah, they wow. were they were actually you know this is that was the beginning of you know the actors getting together the ones that became the Pregones uh, cast uh, they used to stay after work and do their thing you know with the developing of, wow. of the theater group so we you know we have a special bond between us sure uh, Rosalba Rolong uh, it's a genius at what she does. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it just makes me feel like, a, you know, like when you give birth to someone? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I feel like I have uh, helped in that, in that birth. With so many different artists and performers and groups. Yes, I yeah, mean, it's yeah. amazing. Yes, it was, it was really amazing. We worked with El Museo del Barrio. Sure. That was, we were very close there. Uh, especially when Jack Aguero, Agueros was there, even though Malta was one of the original uh, uh, executive directors, yeah, uh, she had already left I that see. area by that time. I see. And uh, I really, and then Jack Agueros, when he took over, we were, we worked uh, very, very closely with him. Sure. Uh, and then another friend of ours. Uh, it they was on the board, George Aguirre. Okay, okay. Yeah. He was a chair at the board at the sun, at that time, and Lillian was on the board. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay, Lillian yeah. was on the board. Lillian, too. Wow. I think it was. With, it may have even been before Jack. I'm not sure right now. Yeah. But the both of them were on the board. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they, you know, they did a lot, you know, to help raise up the. Uh, the museum, which sure. at that time was uh, founded by and for Puerto Rican community. Absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. changed now. It's not the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But things do change. And yeah, Lillian was yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, she was right 25 years. 25 years. <laughs> and you know what? It also makes sense with, with housing. Oh, yeah. It does. It does, yeah. How things change within 25 years, the neighborhoods change. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Which is happening now again. Sure. You know, with the pandemic. I mean, I you know. see all these stores have closed. It's incredible. I know. It, it the is, ones yeah. that you least expect are closing. I know. Or closed. Yeah. But uh, getting back to AHA, because that's what we're talking about. Uh, I also worked with Raul Julia on I, I also worked with Raul Julia on a project. Okay, yeah, This yeah. is way after uh, Elsa had left. She had left to work with her husband on uh, a company, a marketing 
in advertising. Sure. But uh, so the new director was Jane Delgado, and uh, we we were able to get um, Val Julia to to come to the office to do a PSA. Oh, okay, okay, wow. And he was he was delightful. He was just such a great human being. So, uh, and unfortunately, that tape of ours got lost somewhere. Oh, that's too bad. I know. Every time I think of it, my stomach turns. Wow. Because it was such a beautiful, uh, it was, just, I don't know, maybe three or four minutes. Sure, cause sure. Because that's what, you know, for the PSA. Yeah. And uh, we, so we worked on that. And when I met him and I said to him, and where are you from? So he says, he said to me very seriously, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. I said, no, I know you're Puerto Rican. I said, well, what, what city, where, you know, what town? Yeah, yeah, sure. And he says, San Juan. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how I learned to say his last name. Because most people say Raul Julia. Mm. And it's Raul Julia. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I never forgot that because he told me how to pronounce his name. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So that was one of the highlights for me. Absolutely. Working with him. Um, and then there were others, you know, uh, like I mentioned Miriam. <laughs> Miriam would call the office and she was always, you know, giving us advice and stuff. <laughs> And she, and she would stay on for a while. And I said, okay, I'm going to switch it over. You can talk to Elsa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she was sweet. And she always she always remembered me and, and my sister. You're and sure, sure. Every time, every, my sister, because she knew both of them. So, uh, so working with those artists, because I, I don't want to, it was just so great. At first, they, I thought they were crazy. Yeah. <laughs> we had uh, three artists working with us. Luis Melendez and Manuel Tauron. Those were the two that worked closely with me. Sure. And drove me crazy. <laughs> they really did. I could, you know... Their time clock is really different from from ours. Yeah, because you know, they stay up late at oh, night. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I was in charge of them and <laughs> keeping an eye on the time they came in and all that. But uh, they got very close to me. Sure. They really did. They they really uh, worked hard. We every six weeks we had a. A gallery opening. Okay, yeah. With uh, uh, we focused in on on artists from the community. Sure. And uh, it was it was fun, but it was a lot of work. Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah. Every six weeks to get that down and put it up, and you know, and these two characters used to <laughs> come in. Uh, let's say the the gallery opening was on a Friday. Okay, yeah. And Thursday, they still had not put up <laughs> any, anything. And Elsa was on my back. And what's happening? You know, today, this is Thursday. Didn't they have it? Well, they, you know what they would do? They would stay up all night. All night Thursday, huh? <laughs> into Friday. And when we came in, they finished it off in the morning. And by the, by the evening, it was up and everybody was happy. <laughs> it, I, I, I marveled at the way they worked because sometimes they had to paint. Yeah. You know, it, it was just something to. <laughs> <laughs> and because um, I've always been an early riser. Sure. It was, and I was at work at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And these guys didn't start till ten, you know, which was okay, but the point was that those two hours. You know, they could have been working, yeah. and they weren't because they were sleep, the, their, cl their, yeah, their yeah. clock was a little different. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, Luis Melendez went on to uh, be part of the Pregones. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. He became, he was one of the founders. So, Luisito, uh, he passed away during the AIDS 
situation. Mm. And so did Manuel, the ah, two of them. Sad. Uh, we lost so many, many. Oh, it was, yeah. There was a long list. I'm sure. Uh, whether they worked directly with us in the project or we just knew of them, but uh, it was a sad time. I'm sure. But it during was. the time that we knew each other and worked with each, you know, with each other was just a great, great experience. Absolutely. And the, you know, they, they just, you know, artists, uh, the other one that, that comes to mind is uh, Adal Maldonado. Oh, sure. His sure. photography, and, and I've worked with him uh, getting him uh, some of the subjects for his book. Yeah. He came to me and he, he, he said, I have this idea uh, to doing portraits of Puerto Ricans. Yeah. So, you know, he talked to me about what he wanted to do and I started giving him lists of people. Yeah. And what he was so smart and uh, people liked his work that Whoever he, you know, let's say he went to one person and he's, oh, you know, you tried this other person. Yeah. So that's how he managed to get all these people. I have the sure. book there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, Portraits of the Puerto Rican. Yeah, his portraits are so beautiful. Oh, and then he went, after that, I mean, he, he just continued. Uh, he was just a genius with that camera. Yeah. And uh, or no, all the artists that we were working with, and we had uh, we had the visual artists, we had the performers. Sure. We had the uh, uh, whether it was dance or actual, you know, performing in the theater, theater. Yeah. And they were all so talented. I mean, really, really talented. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The people and groups you've named so far, it's just mm -hmm. amazing, and I'm sure it's barely even scratching. The yeah, Tato Laviera was the other one. Oh, they okay. used to. <laughs> He used to come to the office um, and and would sit there and I says, I gotta work. He would come with his ideas. Sure. And Jorge Soto. Okay, okay, yeah. The uh, uh, visual artist who was very, very well known. And he was he used to come and talk politics with me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He ca he'd come with his two kids. They were maybe eight, nine years old. Okay. Now they're grown and their parents themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Luis uh, Minat, uh, Minat, Lin Minat, Lin Manuel. Sure. Uh, was also, uh, Miranda. Sure. Was also, came with his mom one day uh, to the office. And he was about nine. Oh, wow. Yeah, we used to see the, a lot of the little ones. Um, with the musicians, we had um, uh, the one that just passed away, uh, not just a couple of years ago. Uh, it was a Fort Apache uh, orchestra. It was the the younger one. Uh, see how the names escape us now, and I know his name well. <laughs> It'll come to us. But anyway, he he was part of the project as well. Sure. And uh, so, you know, we, when I think about, you know, when, when you're going through it, when you're living it, yeah. you, you don't see, I'm not going to say the importance, you just, you know, this is what you do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's the day-to-day -day work and yeah. you don't realize how and, it all adds up over time. Right. So, and it was after, you know, they all started you know, making names for themselves, you know, I knew you when, you know, but they never forgot, the, most of them, you know, never forgot me. Sure, And I'm Elsa, sure. and, and Aha, they felt that uh, it, Aha had been a catalyst for them to spread their wings. Absolutely. So Absolutely. we had that program for two years. Okay, okay. And then they cut it down. Yeah. It was, it, you know, and it was you, to spite yourself, you, you, you're cutting this because yeah. although they were, you know, were working under the project, they were getting paid, yes, but they were, we weren't receiving any other 
eight, right? Sure, sure. Okay. So once they let them go, they went on unemployment. Yeah. And weren't part of the pro. They had, they had, they didn't have the jobs, you know, at the different places. Yeah. So the organization suffered because they would get these artists, and they didn't have to pay them. Yeah. Because yeah. the the federal government was paying them. Sure. And then uh, when they took that away, they both were out of out of business. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it just made so much sense. I know, I know. Yeah. Like the old uh, WPA. Yeah, it, it was it was on that order. Yeah, yeah. It was on that order, and many of the works, you know, that they they uh, contributed, or you know, they may have left them in the uh, with the organizations. Or some of them, like I got, you know, gifted. Sure. Manny Vega's another one that okay, that, yeah, came, that yeah. was uh, he wasn't part of the project, but part of Aha. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and they were all young, young people. Sure, <laughs> in their twenties. Their twenties, I guess. Yeah, some of them. yeah, yeah. Wow, 20s wow. And 30s, yeah. Uh, like Manny was very young. I think he was just out of high school. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But what a talent. He, 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 he had also workshops at the Museo teaching okay. children how to draw. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, and a wonderful thing about all of this is not only were the artists paid and, and your organization, you know, didn't have to try to come up with funds, but they were able to you know, mm -hmm. spread their art to and it wasn't, many children in yeah. some cases at schools. Or right, and it wasn't just the high, it was a oh, lot of organizations. Sure, sure. There was the cultural, I forgot the whole name, that there were, I, I, there were on quite a number throughout the city Absolutely. that were doing Absolutely. the same thing. So you could imagine the, the art and the culture that was spread yeah. all along. Yeah. Yeah. So it was an all, you know, Fun and games because we had work to do. Sure, sure, a lot <laughs> we, of work. We had sure. a lot of work with meetings and meeting with the Department of Cultural Affairs. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, originally they were in the Parks Department building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was so nice. That was so so nice. We used to meet with the commissioner there, Geldfeller. Mm. Geldfeller was his name. Yeah, he was the commissioner. And the assistant commissioner, Gregory Millard, was the assistant commissioner. Okay. Nice young man. He also died of AIDS. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. Liked him a lot. Um, so, uh, you know, so we did that. We, we partnered a lot with uh, Malta also. Sure. She used to sure. give conferences with the elected officials, you know, to let them know what was going on. And, yeah, uh, and we used to do that. We had the newsletter that you were the editor of, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and I was the editor until uh, Elsa left. After that, I was maybe did one or two, and uh, the new director wanted to change it, and she hired someone else to do it. But okay, uh, I was given other assignments. Sure, so, but I did do it. During the time I was with, most of the time with Elsa. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, it was, you know, when you go from one job to another, you bring skills with you. Sure. So my skills from UBP and working, you know, with all the other jobs I had uh, turned out to help me. Yeah. But I also added skills oh, definitely. by being uh, by being at AHA. So uh, to me, that was the turning point. Sure. For for me to express myself and to uh, you know to to really see who I could be. Absolutely. It was Absolutely. really and because of Elsa, and I have to keep repeating it because uh, she was just. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. And 
unfortunately she just passed away mm -hmm. recently and, and that hit me a lot mm -hmm. because we had remained more like sisters I'm sister sure. friend yeah so I miss her a lot how, how long were you both working at AHA together? About so six about, years. About six years, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then she went to work. and But we kept, you know, the friendship. And sure. I used to, she used to invite me to things at, at, at uh, it was the Robles Communications. Okay, okay. And uh, so, uh, her husband is an actor as well. Mm. And uh, so he does a lot of work with repertorio. Okay. He does okay. commercials for the Spanish station. Sure. Yeah. So that that was a great, great part. And working with the artists too, that with the newsletter was also uh, important because sure. they had to, uh, the graphic artists oh, had to put yeah. it together. You know, I, I would give them my ideas, and then, and I had everything ready. I worked with, uh, but just one newsletter, I worked with Nesta Otero. Okay. Because he was moving to PR. So he moved and uh, uh, Chente, Vicente. Yeah, Chente came after that and worked with me. And he was good. He was really uh, another one that died of AIDS. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it, wow. it, it really hit the the artistic community. I'm sure. Yeah. No. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So um, besides, you know, being in the office and doing all the paperwork and all that. Yeah. And the directory, we had the directory of uh, Hispanic organizations and artists. Sure. We had that, um, and that was to uh, be distributed to all the organizations yeah. so that would have like it was almost like um, when you when you get a book uh, I think they do it with the uh, with the performance where they have the picture and their bio yes, yes well yes. it was almost on that order wow so I'm sure that took a tremendous amount of time to put together oh, yeah. to keep updated and yeah. all of that yeah. yeah it was a big job yeah and you know we but we also had we had a um uh, on the subway and on the buses it, no it was just the buses not the subway we we had through the organization we were able to get uh, a non-profit rate and we did an advertising oh wow yeah okay, of, okay. The AHA, of the aha uh, organization wow yeah that was that was nice yeah. And so we would get on the bus in there. We would see, <laughs> there you yeah, be, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was good. Um, so, you know, so the fun part, like I said, was, you know, going out and all that, but there was a lot of work to it. Oh, I'm sure. There was a lot of work. I'm sure. And, you know, we put in many hours. And we, the other thing is, you know, when you're working with a nonprofit organization, you have to be ready to do that work. Even Absolutely. if you have to clean the bathroom. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so we did all of those things. I know about that for we sure. We <laughs> did all of those things, but we were we were happy. We were happy what we were doing. It. It was just we felt we were doing something. Yeah. For the for the community and for ourselves too. You know Absolutely. because it's very gratifying. Absolutely. Very gratifying. So. Um, after 10 years, uh, I was actually offered a job at Lehman College. Sure. Uh, excuse me. I went for an interview and they hired, they, they wanted me to start right away. Yeah. So that was in 1988. Okay, 1988, okay, yeah. I went to work with, uh, with Lehman as the... Uh, I was the director of Hispanic uh, Hispanic Affairs. Okay. Because yeah. they wanted, actually, they they really wanted to, uh, or they said they did anyway. <laughs> they wanted to bring in, uh, you know, the Latino community you know, sure. to participate and be, you know, come to the theater and all that. So I was there just under a year. Okay. Okay. Um, I. 
I learned a lot too about performing, you know, performances. I, I've worked long hours and weekends. I'm sure you did, yeah. But sure. I met other people there. And uh, you know who I met there in one of the performances was Ossie Davis and his wife. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ruby Dee. Yeah, right? they, they, yeah. yeah they, did, they did a uh, show. And uh, so I, I was there. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. I, they they seem in the in the eighties. Uh, actually, in that I've seen things going you know back to the sixties, seventies, and eighties. They were at so many Bronx events because they just lived up in um, in, in uh, Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon, right? Yeah. So yeah, and yeah. he he was very uh, close affiliated with the eleven ninety nine union. Oh, sure, sure. And sure. I have there's a picture at because uh, I gave it to to Centro. This is a picture of, uh, of Evelina, me, and Lillian with Ozzy Davis. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's... That was, that was special. something, yeah. Yeah, 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 got good memories. And so I, I, stayed, I stayed there uh, for under a year, but then I got another offer to work at the Center for the Media Arts. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. And there, it was a school, you know, to bring in students to to go into the media business. Sure. I was there for four years. It wasn't exactly what I wanted to do because yeah. it was it was a little difficult trying to convince people to spend money they didn't have. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that always, you know, sort of nudged me. You know, I wasn't that happy about it, but sure. I did last four years there. And uh, eventually they closed, by the way. <laughs> they yeah. closed. Uh, but it was, uh, it was a good experience again, you know, because everything that you do in life is an experience. Sure, right? and you learn. <laughs> you learn. new things from it. And, yeah. yeah. So after that, when I left there, because they, had, they, they did downsizing. Okay. And I was one of the ones that was downsized after four years. Uh, I was unemployed. Yeah. And I was so afraid of what was going to happen. How am I going to make it? You know, that. But fortunately, I I was able to get uh, through a friend, uh, Alice Cardona, okay. who was uh, uh, worked for the federal government she, she and of, for the community. First of all, the community. Yeah. And uh, she she worked actually in the Cuomo administration, Mario Cuomo. Oh, okay. Sure. Anyway, she introduced me to uh, to the person at the Department for the Aging. Oh, I and, see. I see. And uh, her name is Lorraine, or is Lorraine Cortez Vasquez. Mm. Well, she hired me uh, to work. For, it was temporary, but sure. it was a job. Sure, absolutely. You know, and I started there immediately. And everything I did there turned to gold. Yeah. Because I knew so many people. Oh, yeah. So I, I was in the... Uh, they had me uh, using my skills in um, marketing and getting people to know who we were. Sure. And... So that again, you know, fell into what I had learned before at a hop. Absolutely. So uh, I was there, uh, and the boss that I worked under, uh, she loved she loved my work, Karen Schaefer, and Janice Chu, and again, they were two people that supported, you know, me in my job and were very very helpful. Yeah. So um, I'm there, and and she's doing her best to try to get me on permanently. Sure. When I and I, let me see, maybe I was there for like four months. Okay. Four to five months, I got a call from Girl Scouts. Okay. Someone had recommended me. Yeah. And. I mean, this came out. I had seen the, the, the description. And I had seen the, they had sent out a description, you know, to the whole community. Sure. And I saw it, but I didn't, you know, think that 
that I was, that it was something I could do. Yeah. So, but whoever recommended me obviously thought I could. Yeah. And uh, I never found out who that person was. Huh. And they called me and wanted to interview me. So, I, out of curiosity more than anything, sure. I said, okay, and I made an appointment. I told my boss that I'd be in late that day. Yeah, yeah. And I went, and it was, uh, I had that, it was on Fifth Avenue. They had just moved on Fifth and 30, they were 37th Street, 37. Okay. Anyway, I went for the interview, and they, you know, uh, went to HR. Yeah. And then they said, that they'd like me to meet the person that would be my supervisor. This is all in one day. Wow. In fact, I had to call my office now. <laughs> really a little later. later. Yeah. So I had the meeting with her, and uh, she had a West Indian accent. Mm. And I was used to the West Indian accent, but not like this. Sure, sure. Every time she talked, I would say, excuse me? Yeah. Could you repeat that? I said to myself, this is it, you know, I'm not going to get this job. Yeah. Well, I left there, and that more, the next day, I get a call. If I'm still, this is a HR, if I'm still interested, that they, they uh, like to check my references. Okay, yeah. And I said, okay. So, yeah, I'm interested. Well, when they gave me you know, the description and, and what I have to do, that scared me. Yeah, Because yeah. I had to travel, they said 45% of the time. Wow. And it turned out to be more than 45%. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> In fact, I, I, once I got into the job, I traveled once a month. Wow. And anyway, <laughs> before I took the, you know, before I said yes, definitely, I talked to a few people. Bill Aguado was one. My son was the other one, Paul. And Paul was more concerned with the travel issue. Okay, yeah. He said, that's a lot of traveling for you, Ma, you know, at this stage. And I said, yeah, but it's a permanent job. Yeah. Know? And I, I'm, where I am now, it's, it's not a sure thing. Sure. So that was something I considered. And Bill was a little hesitant as well. Yeah. And but I I made I slept on it. Yeah. And I made my own decision. And I said, look, well, I have nothing to lose. And everything to gain. Yeah. So I I took the position, and it was the first time I had worked in a building that was brand new, and everything was there. You didn't have yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to hustle for anything, and I. They would. They also were looking for uh, a lot of uh, uh, diversity at the time. Sure. Uh, so uh, I met some really good people. Some of them lived in New York, somewhere from outside of New York, because we were the national office. Yeah. So we would. Um, bring in people from the different states for meetings and conferences. And they also have a conference center upstate in Chappaqua. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. The Edith Macy, Edith, Man, Edith Macy Conference Center. And when I first heard the name, I, at first I, I used to associate it with Macy's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> they would refer to it as Macy. Oh, okay, okay. And, and, but it had nothing to do with... <laughs> so, I was very excited to work at Girl Scouts. Um, it was just a, a different organization in yeah. terms of... Uh, even though it's a non-profit organization, it, it has the feeling of a corporate, it sure, does, sure, because sure. it's so big and, and uh, where we were located. Um, but uh, I was, you know, my heart was in my mouth. I was yeah. 
when will I be able to do this job, you know? But uh, they wanted, uh, you know, to do some diversity. So um, here I was, they assigned me, they assigned me to the, uh, uh, to their program where you visited the council offices and uh, see, every, every few years, councils have to go through uh, 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 like a, not an exam, but to see where they're at mm. in different things and with finances, it's uh, recruiting girls. Sure. Do, do they have diversity? Yeah. So it's almost like a, a you know, when you're in school and you do, do a turd paper. Yeah. So the, uh, the area I was in, we would visit uh, uh, the, the councils. Sure. And uh, first you visit them to show them what we're going to be looking for. Yeah. It's almost like a day uh, with them to go over the things. And then you come back six months later and you meet with the board of directors. Uh, the, the person like me uh, had to read all about the councils wow. to know who they were, what they were doing, where, you know, where their uh, weaknesses were, sure. where the, the things that what they were doing really good. And not to tell them, you know, uh, chastise them, yeah. but just, you know, to guide them. Sure. That was the, the idea. So I started there in 1992. Okay. At Girl Scouts. And uh, at first, you know, they, they have someone, uh, oh, the name of the, the area was self-evaluation. Oh, self-evaluation, okay. Yeah, that was the area I was in. And there were six of us. Uh, representative, like went all over around the country, the nation, yeah. around the nation, and it was really exciting, you know, to go to places that, you know, I, I never would even thought of going to. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> but um, I, I was excited about it, and then um, to be able, to, you know, th we had. Let me explain to you. Uh, we had the supervisor. We had two secretaries. You, this was all new to me, right? Yeah. Two secretaries. I know, yeah. And uh, the supervisor, and then there was uh, the team of, uh, uh, count, like us, uh, councils. And one of the things that happened was that at first they, they don't just send you out, okay? Yeah. They, they train you. Sure. And they have somebody go with you on the first few uh, visits so that you know how to navigate. We had, right in the building, on one of the floors, we had the the, uh, um, the travel, the person in charge of travel, so that okay. you, you would call them and tell them, I need this, this is where I'm going, this is where I, what time I have to be there. Yeah. So everything was, you know, very well organized, yeah. I have, must say. Well, the first time I went out, I went, the first few times I went with someone, okay? Yeah. So they, they were uh, guiding me. The first time I was going out by myself, which was a few months later, my big boss, uh, Jerry, Jerry Os Oborn, who now lives in California, uh, African-American, brilliant woman, she called me in, and I, said, I thought maybe called to her office. I thought maybe I had done something. Yeah. She called me in to warn me that when I I was going to uh, Nebraska. Oh, okay. And she warned me. She says, "When you go there, the only person that's going to look like you is the one that you look in the mirror." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was. That was <laughs> I said, "Oh boy, <laughs> I, need, I needed this, right?" Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that was my first trip out, and I was glad she told me that. Sure. She also, she also told me uh, when I went to the hotel to get, she get 
the a room that was uh, closest to the elevator. Mm. Yeah, she told me that. So you know, those were little things you yeah. know, that I wouldn't have thought of. But uh, I had a good experience. That's good. <laughs> it was good experience. Um, it was, you know, all mainly white people. I'm sure, yeah. It was very little. Uh, it was Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had a, it, it was a good experience. I can't say it wasn't. And uh, the people that I met, you know, they were all, you know, they were very nice to me. I didn't have any incidents at all. That's good, yeah. Everything went well. So that was good because it was the first experience. Not that I didn't have ex other experiences later. Sure, but this sure. was this was a good one. And uh, I... Oh, I went on a plane that took me to, sh you know what, it was outside of Omaha. It wasn't Omaha, the city, it was outside. Oh, okay. Uh, but when we, I took the plane to Chicago. Yeah. And from Chicago, uh, we had a, a, what do they call the, 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 the small planes? Oh, um, the, the, uh, I, I, it, it, I, this is probably a colloquial yeah. uh, thing, but puddle jumper. Is that's like, it. Okay, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah puddle yeah. jumper. I got on that. I had never been on one of those. <laughs> those plays. are scary to me. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, from Chicago to to Nebraska, you know, that's quite a distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that that really not that it impressed me, but I was like fascinated <laughs> was yeah. to see all the men with the cowboy hats they look like well cowboy cowboys and at the hotel I stayed in when we went to, to eat in their restaurant they had these buffets and the, they would come and pile up all this thing. I was just I, I was really I said, oh my God, and it was, they went all for the meats. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the meat guys. And I think that was the hotel that they didn't have a room ready for me. And and I stayed in a, it wasn't a, a it was like a, one of their rooms that they used for meetings, but they had turned it over to a. Okay, I see. Yeah. It, it, I only stayed there one night, yeah. but it was kind of strange. Yeah, like yeah. a conference room or yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. But then uh, the next day they gave me a room. Yeah. But uh, I, I, my that experience. It's a good thing that it was a good one because you know I would have then set me up for the future. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, but we did, you know, uh, we did go to. I went to eighty percent of the country. Wow. Yeah, yeah. My my favorite states were California. Yeah. California, Texas, because uh, we went to the border. Okay, sure, sure, yeah. And we met a lot of people that were, uh, you know, they were actually bilingual because they oh, either lived lived or worked on the border, and yeah. it was it was fascinating yeah. to see people coming across to work from. From Mexico to, to Texas. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not talking about the farmers, I'm talking about, you know, regular jobs. Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, so, and then I have a friend who, who, who lives there, and she was one of the people I worked with, uh, because at that time they were bringing in a lot of people from the different states here in the national office, and we okay. would work with them. Yeah. So, uh, it was great working with her, and I still, you know, I've been to her home uh, uh, in Texas. She lives in Waka, 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 oh, I can't even remember now. Wachahachi. Wachahachi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you've been there? I, I've never been there, but I, but I, I knew, knew people you knew, who were from there. Before, yeah, yeah, she had some house there. So that was a, a, a plus. Yeah. Uh, to to be visiting with her there. But anyway, we, we did a lot of work in the border. Sure. And her family, her mom was from uh, Eagle Pass, no, 
It was another per person, uh, another person that worked with us. Her mother was from Eagle Pass. Mm. So one of the first experiences there, we were going uh, on the border, you know, to, to recruit uh, uh, Latinos, sure. students. And all of a sudden we saw the cops running and doing, and it was that some, somebody or one or two people had crossed the border uh, and they were being chased wow. by the customs. Sure. And they, then they started stopping everybody. And my girlfriend says, she's driving, she says, don't talk, let me do all the talking. Yeah, yeah. Just keep your mouth shut. Yeah. So we were all ner we all had uniforms on, by the way. Okay. The Girl yeah. Scout uniform. So they stopped us and started, "Who are you? What are you doing here?" Blah 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 blah. So she answered, and then uh, we left there, and you know they let us go. But she she says if we you know if any of us had talked, it would have been a problem. Yeah, I'm sure. So she knew what to say to them. It yeah. was it was. That hit me. I said, oh my God, you know, because I felt for the people that were running. I too. know, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We don't know if they caught them or what, but so that, that's an occurrence that happens. And yet, you know, they, they talk about the border and everything, but let me tell you that the people coming in from Mexico or the ones from the Texas going to Mexico to, to work, sure, uh, they get along. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, and they both speak both languages. Yeah, and yeah. The, the towns or cities on both sides of the border are so closely intertwined. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the border is completely yeah. arbitrary. And they case. celebrate each other's holidays. Oh, I, we had a great time yeah, on yeah, the Mexican yeah. side. Oh, yeah, We for had sure. a great time. So those are the memories of uh, the other in California, to San Diego. Oh, okay, yeah. Again, because sure. the border is right there. The one that was a little upsetting again was, uh, uh, what's that town? The one that's uh, well known in California on the border. Oh, wow. Um, With the T? Oh, uh, Tijuana. Tijuana. Yeah, Tijuana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, going from California, which from San Diego, which is so rich. Sure, yeah. And then you're going over there, you see all these shacks. Yeah. Oh, that was that was really upsetting. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. upsetting. But, um, you know, we, we had a really, you know, wonderful time. We went to LA, but uh, San Diego, San Francisco was another. Oh, okay, one that really, I, yeah. I really, really liked. So, uh, we, you know, I've done other Chicago, uh, uh, Indiana. Indiana was a real small town. We couldn't even oh. find a place to eat. It only uh, the uh, fast foods. Oh yeah, no, no other restaurants at all. Huh? Yeah, that was a very small town. Like I say, I, I wouldn't have chosen to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> but again. I learned, it was an education for me to yeah. learn about people outside of New York. New York is, is so special in, in having, you know, people from all, all different backgrounds. So this was quite different. People living in beautiful homes, you know, here we're living in apartments. Sure, sure. Uh, even uh, people uh, of color have Unbelievable homes in some of the states. Yeah. In the mid the Midwest, we we went to a board of directors home. She happened to be uh, Afro American, and she had a a house with three car garage. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and and guess what the prices were? They were all like three fifty to four hundred thousand. Wow. Which at that time, you know. Here, you can, well, even here now, forget it. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, beautiful. And people are living next to each other, whether they're white or, 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 or African-American or, or Latinos. You yeah. Know, that is 
so unusual here in New oh, York. For sure. And you wonder, you know, what something's wrong. You yeah. know, if if they can do it, why can't we? Yeah. You know, I mean, not that it's that way every everywhere, because it depends, but still. Yeah. You don't expect it to happen, you know. Yeah. For us to, to be going through this still. For sure, for yeah. sure. Like I told you, when I first got married, I couldn't get an apartment. I know, I know. Yeah. I know, and it's... That hurt so much. Absolutely. You know, especially since it was like two blocks away from... Yeah. Uh, yeah, the houses and the people. You know, people are people. Yeah. Wherever you go. One of the things that meeting the Girl Scout people, the ones uh, from the councils, we were all on the same page in terms of wanting uh, girls, you know, to, to get the best education they could. Sure. And so that was, you know, one of the things that I liked about the travel. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, like I said, I loved San Francisco. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That was, that was so. I have a few story about going to California. Uh, I had uh, we uh, in the group had to pass on to uh, the supervisor what you know where we were going, and she would look at because she had to sign off okay, on yeah. on our travel. So one of the places, and it was in the northern part of uh, California, I was going to. I had to go to the Ontario airport. Okay. So, Lord and behold, uh, Edith was her name. <laughs> calls me. She says, "Why are you going to Canada to get to California?" <laughs> I said, "What?" I says, "That's Ontario, California, not Ontario, Canada." Yeah. <laughs> and, and I said, "You know, you can call the travel." People downstairs, they'll tell you, because that was the best route. Okay, sure. Because that's what the other thing that their job was to give us the best, the best route. route. So then she said, "Oh, oh, okay." <laughs> and she checked it out, <laughs> and she. But I laughed because I knew I was right. Yeah, I knew I was right, <laughs> and she was wrong. I was going to Santa Barbara. That's where mm. I was going. And yeah. that's. Is that like in the middle of California? It was in the middle, but it was near, Ontario uh, Airport is near there. Okay. I'm sure it was there, but yeah, that we had, that I had to go. That's funny. <laughs> Isn't that a funny story? Yeah. Oh, I have more funny stories. Uh, in, the, in the travel, you know, the hotels. Uh, another time, this is when I was in training, uh, Audrey and I went down to Florida. Oh, okay. Pensacola. Oh, Pensacola. Okay, okay, yeah. And uh, there was a few things that happened that trip. First of all, Pensacola does not have daylight savings time. Oh. <laughs> okay? It's the only city, wow. the only city in Florida that does not. Wow. And we had a meeting, and when we got there, she says, we gotta rush, we gotta rush because the time, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I says, we'll, we'll make it, we have time. It turned out when we went to the clerk, he said to us <laughs> that we were an hour, they were an hour ahead. <laughs> so, but we did make the, the meeting. That was number one. That's funny. Number two, when we were coming back on the airplane, yeah, we were coming back from, from the trip. It was like a one day trip. Okay. We were coming back. And uh, what was the guy's name? That uh, King, he was the boxing promoter. Oh, um, what's his name? Uh, 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 King, right? Yeah, King. Um, he was at one time, you know, like a celebrity and everything. Yeah, right? Don King. Don King. So we're at the airport, and we're waiting and waiting. The line that's not moving. And it was his his people were trying to check in his. We didn't know this at the time. Yeah. His credit card. It didn't go through. Oh. And they didn't want to let them on the plane. Oh wow. And he had come with all his you know, big shot things. Yeah. And he saw my friend, 
uh, Audrey, who she's one of you know sometimes a woman uh, draws attention without wanting to oh, just sure. because who she is, and and he saw her, he, he was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and she says she says to me she says, I don't know what he wants, but he ain't getting it. <laughs> So when we got on the plane, they had to sit in the back. Oh. They obviously they had gotten first class seats, but they had to sit in the back. Whatever that was the arrangement they gave me. And we were sitting there. I don't know. Oh, there was a lot of yeah. There was a lot of um, talking and. And I think this guy was trying to rap to her. Yeah. Anyway, we talked to the to the flight attendant, and they gave us both first class seats. Oh wow! We moved. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That was that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, you know, uh, traveling. That was one of the perks that oh, I had sure. because I racked up so many miles. I was, I I always. You know, got into the first class. Wow, that's great! Yeah, yeah that was the, one of the best perks. If you're gonna fly to, you know, a small town in the middle of nowhere, I guess it makes it a little better if you're flying in comfort anyway. Or anyway, <laughs> you know, wherever it was, it, yeah. was, it was a great thing. So um, my experience there, I with with Girl Scouts, I worked in the self evaluation, and then they decided to cut that down. And we worked, they shifted me over to uh, uh, outreach. Oh, okay, okay. Which made sense. Sure, sure, Because yeah. that was my thing. And uh, so I was there for a few years. <gasps> Wait a minute, Out outreach first? No, it was diversity first. Oh, okay. It was diversity, and that's where um, I met a lot of wonderful people. We, we would go to councils to give them uh, workshops on diversity. Oh, wow, wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, they cut that one, and I went to outreach, Okay. membership outreach. So while I was there, it was almost like going to another new job. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> I had to, again, you know, uh, learn the, and all the new people. The new people, but you know, we all knew each other anyway. Oh, okay, It's sure. just that it was different departments yeah yeah and different programs but I had a great office with a window and talking about that window one of the saddest parts of my being in that building was 9-11 oh wow I'm sure I was sitting at my office looking down south yeah and see I'm 37th Street so I'm looking down to 34th all that Fifth Avenue yeah and uh, it was about, I, I got in at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And when I uh, was on the phone, and I see this plane, and that plane is going that way instead of this way. Yeah. And I told my neighbor, I said, Doris, did you see that? She says, yeah. I said, that plane's going in the wrong direction. She says, yeah. And wow. as we said that, it hit me, you know. It hit the building. Wow. So that was the first one. Wow. And then, you know, by that time it was 8, uh, I think it was 8.40 or something like that. Yeah. And then people had been coming in, you know, to the office. Some of the uh, supervisors were in. Anyway, uh, you know, we were shaken. And then the second plane hit. Mm -hmm. And that's, when it really got bad. Yeah. I didn't sure. after that I didn't want to look. I didn't yeah. want to look at all. Yeah. And the day just was like so sad. Uh they you know, we we were let go early. Yeah. Uh some people had to walk home. My friend Doris walked to Brooklyn. Wow. She went over the bridge. Um I stayed in Manhattan at my son's and actually I couldn't I walked to 72nd Street, somewhere in that area. Okay, yeah. And Broadway. That's where, and I was on 37th Street. Yeah, that's a long walk. 
And wow. uh, there I caught the bus to, uh, they were on, right by Columbia University. Mm. So I, I, that's how I got there, but didn't sleep that night because the planes kept coming, or the helicopters were yeah. over. It was, wow. And when, when it happened, I called my son. He says, what are you talking about? He didn't, he, he didn't know. This, they've hit the, the vice table. And then he, he put the radio. Anyway, he, he, he realized what I was talking about. And he left his job to go get my granddaughter, who was in school. Wow. So it was, it was, a, it was a day that well, nobody will forget. For sure. Because you remember where you were and what you were doing, but uh, I saw that plane going there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I still can't believe it. And my nephew Joey was one of the first responders. Oh, he was one of the first responders there. Wow. Yeah. 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 So, you know, and I know people who were supposed to be there and weren't there that day. Yeah. Yeah. Thank I God. But then there was some, a lot that got caught up. Yeah, I yeah. know. It was a really tough time for us mm. uh, in New York. We've gone, we've gone through a lot. Yeah. You know, when I was younger, we had an airplane that hit the Empire State Building. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And right at the top. Yeah. I remember that. That was scary, and because we had never had anything like that. For sure. Yeah. So, so anyway, getting back to uh, Girl Scouts, uh, my last job there was with the membership. And after 10 years, and you know, there are many stories of, you know, of the time I was there. Uh, we had, uh, I learned a lot with the conferences, the Edith Macy Center. Yeah. Uh, we used to, we used to like to go there because it was in the country and everything. <laughs> and how, how long does it take to get up there from? Oh here? well, uh, the train will take you there. Let's say from Forty Second Street, you can get an express. Uh, about forty minutes. Oh okay 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 yeah. Yeah, and if you go by car, which I did you know, a few times, it was maybe I don't know thirty. 30 minutes. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's not far. Yeah. It's not far. Uh, it's, uh, and the town where, where uh, Clinton, the Clintons live now. Ah, sure. It's very quaint. They have small, you know, restaurants and little, uh, it's just, just a small town. Yeah. It's very nice. Yeah. And the area is woodsy and, uh, it feels like you're away, you're away from the city. Well, you are away yeah. from the city, but it feels like you're way away. Yeah, yeah. So that used to be almost like a vacation. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So I have many recollections, recollections of, of, uh, of the trips, and uh, yeah, it was a good time in my life. So when my 10-year mark came, I, I, I was ready, you know, to uh, retire. Sure, yeah. Which I did. And little did I know that I was going to get bored being in the house <laughs> for two years. Yeah, after traveling all over the place. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah. I mean, I did some travel, but, you know, my own, and but it wasn't the same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so that, uh, I had a really big send-off. They gave me a, a party there. And they also uh, uh, facilitated a budget for me to have a party outside, which oh, wow. I did Wonderful. at Osters Community College. Oh, what a great place to have it. Yeah, and uh, it was great. It was great. So uh, that was the end of my career there. And I know there's more stories that I'll think of after you leave today. Mm -hmm. And if I remember them, I will certainly... Uh, Get back to you on that. Great. I think this is a good place to stop for today.